right, good morning. It's nice to be in here, and there's some people here. I like this. Good morning, good morning. If y'all would stand on your feet today, I'm going to worship. And I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. And I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried. To hide, it was my sin till I made. Church.
church this morning, just being in a position of receiving, receiving the blessing of your Father this morning.
the children and his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming and you're going in your weeping and rejoicing of God that the, his goodness to think that he lives in us right church and then he surrounds us he's behind us everything that we need he has deposited within us and so whatever has gone on I mean this is uh, an amazing season that our country is in and all the things that are going on but I believe that the peace of Christ is deposited into every one of his children and as we walk through our nation as we walk through our lives that that peace proceeds us goes before us it's behind us it's within us right and that's because of the Jesus is, that is in you I want to pray for you this morning those of you who may be viewing from home we have two two church families right now we have church at home and church at church so we want to pray for you, whatever's going on, if you need healing in your body. Some of you are just hurting, and some of you are in a really, really dark place. Some of you are uh, in a place where you just need to know what to do. You need direction. Some of you need a job. So whatever's going on, whatever you have need of, your father is never caught off guard. He already knows everything about you. The scripture says he knows the hair on your head, right? I think he even knows which hairs have turned gray. And which kid caused him to turn gray, right? He knows everything. Your act of faith is to acknowledge that you need intervention. You need him to take care of this. This, this thing that he has deposited in you to come up out of you, right? So whatever's going on, your act of faith today, we're not going to move around and touch people, but your act of faith, if you need prayer, whatever's going on, put your hand on your heart right now. Church family, if you're here in the building, if you see someone, you can stretch out your hand toward them. But let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We believe your word above all else. Father, we believe that you are the God of grace, moved by compassion. Father, we believe that we are here for such a time as this. Father, we believe now in Jesus' name that supernatural wholeness is coming upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We thank you, Father, for those who need healing in their bodies, Father, that you are the great physician. Father, we believe that you heal the brokenhearted. Father, we stand and declare that the light of Jesus is in us, so we release light into the darkness that has attacked people. Father, we believe in Jesus' name that we are blessed to be a blessing, and we are highly favored because of you, not only us, but our families and our children and their children and their children. Father, we believe now in Jesus' name that even as we pray that people are getting answers and questions are being answered quickly for them. Father, we believe in Jesus' name that we are the city on the hill church. We are here to change the world. We thank you, Father, that our light drives out the darkness and we believe that church in Jesus name Amen
Are you ready? All right, church at home, let's dive into the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the service so far. And uh, I want to talk to you today about a topic that's certainly very relevant to what we've all been through the last 12 to 14 weeks uh, with the pandemic and certainly what we see in our nation. Uh, this week, uh, we see a lot of people, and I think we all can understand that we've all been under a lot of pressure. And you'll find this in your notes if you downloaded your notes from the app. We're going to dive in that weariness has a way of uh, affecting our decisions, our words, and our actions without us even realizing it. When we're under pressure, there's a tendency to get weary in well-doing. There's a tendency to get tired, to get frustrated, and that weariness becomes a filter that unleashes the pressures from the outside in to your heart, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, We all think that that we have it bad at times, and certainly... There are people across our world that have, and, uh, and perhaps we even think that we, we don't have the strength to continue. So if you find yourself there, you find yourself weary, frustrated, uh, angry, uh, hurting, wounded, uh, physically under attack, I, I want to talk to you today, and I think that what I want to share with you is really going to help. So let's dive right in to the scripture. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to sort of back up from, chapter, from verse 3 to verse 2 to verse 1. Very simple message today, uh, but I think it's really going to be something that's going to help you tremendously. So let's dive into the scripture. I'm going to put it on the screen for you now. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, out of the Passion Translation says this, so consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who, an interesting phrase here, who opposed their own souls. How is it possible to oppose your own soul? We know your soul, biblically speaking, is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And we've used the filter of 2 Timothy 1, 7. This will help us understand what they're saying here in this verse in the book of Hebrews. Uh, Paul said to young Timothy, For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Sound mind translates, you know so well by now, in the Greek text as right thinking. So the right thinking we possess comes from Uh, observing, receiving, believing, and speaking the Word of God. It renews our mind, renews our thinking. The Word of God becomes my filter when I'm under pressure. So when I allow the pressures to get to me and I get weary in that well-doing, it's possible then for my wrong thinking to oppose my right thinking. And this is what the Hebrew writer is saying here. So again, so consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who oppose their own souls so that you won't become worn down and the end result cave in to life's pressures. So here the Hebrew writer, a number one of your notes, gives tremendous insight in how to run our race as well under pressure. And I want us now to back up to verse 2 and let's take a look at some of those steps that we can take. Verse 2, Hebrews chapter 12 says this, looking away. From all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith. Who's the source of your faith? Everybody say, Jesus. I hear you. Giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. What? Your faith. He, Jesus, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So as we read verse 2, I I see there three different keys that are A in your notes to remember when you find yourself under pressure. These are very simple, but I think when you're under pressure and you're weary and you're tired and that's become your filter, perhaps you don't even realize it, you want to know how to find out? Ask the people that love you the most, the people that are close to you. They'll tell you. There are many times that I look to my family, I look to my wife or my children and say, hey, 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 what are you... And they're like, and all I have to do is give me a look. And come on, you know, we all know, right? First thing that I gleaned from verse 2, number one, your notes there, when you're under pressure, is it is important to look away from all that will distract. To look away from the distractions, right? That's why we need the Word of God. That's why you need church at home. That's why those of you that are coming to church at church now, we need All of the focus on what God is saying about life to help us when we're under pressure. Let's go back to verse 1 in Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, At this time, it'll be on the screen in front of you. Having fun? I'm having fun. As for us, we have all these great witnesses, the Hebrew writer uh, says, who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of, are you ready? Every wound that has pierced us and the sin 
we so easily fall into, then we, will be, then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us, right? So very practical instruction here that when we're looking away from those things that are distracting us, it's bringing us to the point that we have to let go of our wounds, let go of these filters, let go of the fears, let go of the doubts, let go of the anger. There's so many people out there right now that are just angry at what's happened during the pandemic. To let go of the hopelessness, to let go of the expectations maybe we had for 2020 that haven't happened and are not going to happen at this point. Because we're in a marathon race, we're letting go of our agendas, they all become wounds in our lives and we have to let go of them all by faith and we do it by focusing on the word of God so that we can run the race that's marked out before us and again we're so used to here in America when we face sickness and disease we go to the doctor we get a shot we get an antibiotic and we get well uh, flu season comes typically December January February it comes it goes we go get a flu shot before the flu season and we don't get the flu we believe God for our healing and our wholeness, and we walk in divine life and divine health. But this pandemic has been different. It is counterintuitive to everything we're used to seeing here in America, right? It's not something that's going away overnight. It's a marathon. We've had to shut down our economy. We've had to go home. We've had to change our lifestyles for weeks at a time, and it's going to be around for we don't know how long. Perhaps another year or two until the vaccine is developed, until the virus has had its time, until the hand of God has come on this planet to drive out the sickness and the disease and the curse of the plague of the coronavirus. That's why they call it the novel coronavirus. This is a marathon, and we can run that race in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you that during this time when those filters of weariness come your way, the things, you know, it's like, you find yourself saying, I hate this pandemic. I hate that I can't go and take the walk where I used to go walk. I hate that my kids can't go to school. I hate that it changed graduation. I hate that my vacation went away. I hate that I lost my job. I hate the stress. I hate what I see on TV 24 hours a day. I'm so tired of hearing about the pandemic. I hate that I'm sitting at home watching church at home when I'd rather be at church at church. <laughs> We all have our hates, right? I hate Diet Cokes. I'd rather have regular Coke. I hate Diet Sodas. I don't drink Diet Sodas. In fact, I drink very little soda at all, and when I do drink a soda, it's not going to be a Diet Soda. I'm going to have the full-strength, real thing Coca-Cola in small amounts. But we all have our hates. I hate coffee. I don't drink coffee. Yes, I'm 61 years old, and I never grew up. We all have our hates. Here's one of my best. I hate lines. I think you've heard me say it over the years. I do not like lines. If I go to a restaurant, and we're there, and we find out it's going to be more than a 15-minute wait, usually I'm off to another restaurant. Many times I've found, my family's always pointed out, that by the time we drive to the next restaurant, we go, and we press in through the crowd, and we leave our names at the next check-in station, that we've already killed the amount of time that it would have taken to get the table at the last restaurant. But that doesn't matter. I hate lines. You know, and here's why. Because for 16 years I was a youth pastor. For 16 years I took youth groups to Astro World before they tore it down. And we stood in lines. I took them to Splash Town. I took them to all kinds of amusement parks. I took youth groups to Disney World where we flew halfway across the country to go do what? Stand in line with lots of people that are hot and sweaty, right? Who are weary, who have all kinds of filters. And then I spent my, half my life at the Slitterbond, taking youth groups from this church to the Slitterbond, where we stood in line. So back when my kids were young as teenagers, they reminded me, uh, Dad, listen, you, you've taken your youth groups to all these places. You've never taken us to, the, to Disney World. You've never taken us to many water parks. And we'd like to go to Slitterbond. Would you take us to Slitterbond? And I felt guilty. And I agreed to do it. They both got to invite a friend, and we went off to Slitterbond that day. I'll never forget it. Drove over to New Braunfels, got to the park. I know the park very well. It has the old part of the park on the Kamal River where it has all the natural water and the inner tubes. And by the way, the inner tubes are great. Now, so social distancing, Slitterbond's the place to be. Put the inner tube around you, and it is a great six-foot bumper. It keeps people away. 
and uh, just no charge for that. And and and, and so I right, I know you're laughing, having a good time. Put the taco down. Put the breakfast taco down, would you please? We're in the Word of God. This is the house of God. It's your house, but it's still the house of God. Having fun, right? And, and so, and so we, we get to Slittermine. We go to the old part of the park. Of course, we've got a new part of the park. And, and I like the old part of the park, but my kids are teenagers. Dad, we want to go to the new part of the park because they've got this new ride. Now, this is a long time ago. But they've got this new ride called the Master Blaster, and it's really cool. You get on like this, you get on this, like this, this raft, and, and, and it takes the, the water goes uphill like a roller coaster, and then it goes down. And it's the largest one, the only one in the whole world, and we've got to go there. Of course, I knew about the Master Blaster because I do water parks for a living. I've got a Ph.D. in water parks. Come on. And so we head off, we get on the tram, go to the other park, right? It's hot, sticky, lots of people. We get to the Master Blaster, and as I'm walking up on the Master Blaster with my two teenagers and the two friends that they've invited to come along that day, uh, I look up and I see the line to the Master Blaster, which is beyond the sign. There's always a sign at the bottom of that multitude of steps that goes all the way up. In, in fact, there's so many stairs up to the top of the Master Blaster that at the top it's like clouds. It goes up above the clouds. And it's full of people all the way down and all the way back to me. And the sign says, from this point, the wait is 7 hours, 15 minutes, and 21 seconds. And that's when I'm like, it, it goes against every filter that I have. It makes me weary. It puts me under pressure. I hate this. I hate lines. I'm not going to do this. But I've got my wife standing there saying, you're going to do this for your kids. And so we stand in line for some unknown period of time. We're finally to the top of the steps. I've been entertaining myself. I've been tolerating it. Uh, my, my blood pressure, I can feel it here. Uh, it's hot. It's sticky. And I now we're in sight of getting on the Master Blaster with the water going uphill like a big roller coaster. And the last few people in line and two ladies or just a few people ahead of us. And they jump on in their little banana boat and off they go. And as they go up the hill, somehow... One fell off and grabbed the other, and they began to flop around like a couple of uh, like a couple of bass that just were pulled out of a lake, flopping around on shore on top of that on top of that run. And the boat goes on; they're flopping around the water. The alarms are going off. They shut the whole thing down. They they sent the emergency guys out there to rescue them, get them off. And I'm four people away from getting there. And, 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 and so, and as soon as they got them off, they made the announcement, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start back the, the, the master, blaster, master blaster back up. But because we had to shut it down, it takes 30 minutes to regenerate. And, and I'm just now 30 more minutes, and I'm that close. And what's my filter? What, what, what makes me cave in under pressure? I hate, I hate lines. And so I'm still fussing, saying, he said, 30 more minutes, baby. You can, see the, you, can see the, you can see the path marked out before you. It's a Hebrews moment, right? I'm like, okay, okay. And about that time, my son's best friend who's with him that day, who has a really deep voice for a teenager, I hear this voice behind me going, Pastor Craig. Oh, uh, Pastor Craig, what? Pastor Craig, what? Uh, what? Uh, well, uh, your, your, your swimsuit is, uh, it's got a rip. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, uh, Pastor Craig, your, your suit, your swimsuit's ripped. I'm like, well, where? He said, well, in, in back. And, and now, now, here's the thing. This is an amazing moment in my life, right? I'm major under pressure, and, and I'm having to communicate to church at home. For church at church, this is easy because I would be doing all the motions and doing this in person. But now, for you guys, just especially for you, I have a prop of me at that moment in my life. Here I am, right? Come on, can you tell? This is me. This is my swimsuit, right? Uh, this is my, my pink skin, right? That's really pink and red at this point from, from all of the suntan, the sunburns going on. And, and so the first thing I did when I heard my son's best friend uh, say I had a rip in my suit, that's the first thing you do, right? You, you want to know where it is because you've been outside all morning long with all kinds of thousands of people, and they're all behind you in line. And this kid's waited two hours and whatever down the time we've been in line to tell me I've got a rip in my suit. I think it must not be any big deal. Or he had said something before now. So I said, well, where is it? He said, well, it's in back. So I began to reach back here, and I, 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 I found... I found the rip. It's, you know, you got your main seam in your swimsuit that goes here, down to here, here into the abyss, you know, here into the abyss. And so as I began to reach for my suit, 
I, I felt the rip up near the waistband, but it just, and I kept feeling it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going, and it just, the rip was all the way into the abyss. And I'm thinking, oh, oh that's not good, but maybe it's not too bad. I mean, he didn't say anything till now. What's going on? And so as I reached up, I, I tried to sort of feel how wide the rip was, and only to discover that not only did it go all the way down the main seam into the abyss, but it also was from here all the way over, right? Did, for, for demonstration purposes, here, all the way over to where now it's not just a rip, it's like a flap. Can you tell? It's like a, it's completely flapped all the way open. And I am like, well, I'm exposed to thousands of people at the Slitter Bond. And when I realize and I'm feeling for my suit and it's not there, I mean, not there at all, it's just completely gone. And I've been in line all this time, and I'm thinking, my first thought is, son, did you not, surely, surely you noticed before now that it's flopped all the way open. But no, and it was at that point that I caved in to life's pressures. I looked at Sandy, and I yelled at her, I am done, I am leaving, I am out of here. In fact, here is, here is the artist's rendering for what I look like at that moment. Here I am, right? That's, that's me. I am done. I am out of here, gone. And she goes, well, where are you going? I said, I don't know, but I'm getting out of this line. And, she did, and then here's what my wife said. Here we go. She says to me, I brought you a spare swimsuit. Now, I hate that. Because, you know, when you're caving in under pressure, you just want to enjoy the moment, Right? You want to have a fit of carnality, and when somebody dumps a load of grace, unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor on your life, and that's what Sandy's doing this morning, what wife, what woman brings an extra swimsuit for their husband? I'm like, well, well where is it? Well, well, I don't have it on me. It's in the car. And, and now I'm, again, I'm upset. Well, Sandy, you, you do understand the car is not in this park. It's in the next park on the other side of the park uh, in the parking lot. And I'm going to have to go on a tram like this and, and, and then go all the way to the car to put it back on. She goes, well, I can't help you there. And so I just stormed off. And as I'm walking toward the car, that moment of grace in my life is beginning to calm me down. And the anger and my wound, I'm beginning to let go of the wound. And, and because of Sandy's grace in my life and think clearly again. Now I'm trying to hold up my suit. I've grabbed the flap, pulled it across, and I'm trying to hold it up so that nobody sees me. And after a while, I finally decided nobody even cares. Half the park is barely clothed anyway, and so I just let it flop open, and away I went. Nobody ever said a word. All the way to the car, put on my suit, had a great day. Did you hear me? You got to let go. <laughs> That's a crazy story, one of my favorites. I hadn't told it in a long time. Never taught it with a prop. you got to let go of every wound. Everybody say, I'm letting go of every wound. And if you're sitting with your family, look at them and tell them, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I know you don't believe it, but I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Second thought when you find yourself under pressure is this. It is important to remember the source of our faith, the one who gave us the first incentive for our believing and our speaking. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. I love Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. He said this when you find yourself under pressure, and God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. That's drawing people back to God. That's our ministry. That's our life. That's the grace we give. Verse 19 says, in other words, it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world, not even keeping records of their transgressions. Transgressions simply, simply means those, those sins and bad decisions and poor choices in your life. He doesn't keep records. And he has entrusted to us the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carried the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf. Turn back to God, the scripture says, <clears throat> and be reconciled to him. Verse 21 says, my life scripture, for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us so that we who did not know sin righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him <coughs> excuse me we have right standing and it only comes from God 
So when you find yourself under pressure, third and lastly today, Jesus is the finisher. See it there in your notes? The one who brings your faith to maturity and to perfection. There is a finisher in you. And in those moments when you find yourself like I did this little bond all those years ago, when you find yourself opposing your own soul, right? I'm angry. I'm wounded. I'm offended. I'm hurt. I'm lonely. I'm tired. Nobody cares. All those filters, all those things we say we hate, never forget that there's a finisher in you who's been there, done that, and bought the T-shirt. Who died for us, paid the penalty for our sin, won a victory over the grave, did it for us when we could have cared less about the things of God. Scripture says Jesus Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Right? When we were hanging on to all these wounds. So when you find yourself under pressure... Hear your word. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says this. We are like common clay jars. Yeah. Common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within. Do you see it on the screen in front of you? So that, we, so that the extraordinary overflow of power will be seen as God's, not ours. Though we experience, I love these words, every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do. But quitting, the scripture says, is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down. Come on, Family Life Church. Come on, church at home. We may be knocked down, but we are not knocked out. Did you hear me? Not out. In fact, Romans 5, 9 has been our scripture throughout this pandemic where Paul said, in Christ, you're at your best right now. Let's say it together. In Christ, I am at my best right now. Now, I have a new word. That was the first word for the previous season while we were at home. And now as we move forward, we've added church at church. Things are beginning to happen. Many of you are back at work. The restaurants are open. Malls are open. Everybody's taking baby steps forward, at least here in South Texas, in different parts of the country. Uh, it might look a little differently. But I've got a great word for us as we move forward that I want you to adopt as your word. It'll be in your outlines and your app. You can download it. It's on the screen right now. Then you can look it up for yourself. Paul said to young Timothy in chapter 1 and verse 12, this is the Passion Translation, the confidence of my calling. What's our calling? We've been given the ministry of reconciliation, drawing people back to a good God. The confidence of my calling enables me to overcome every difficulty. Can we translate it as pressure? Every pressure without shame. For I have an intimate revelation of this God. How are you able to overcome pressure when you're opposing your own soul? It's your intimate revelation of God. How do you get an intimate revelation of God? Your Bible has 7,000 promises. Each one of them are an intimate revelation of the heart of God for your life at that moment. And Paul says to young Timothy, and my faith in him convinces me. And my faith in him, in Christ, in God convinces me. Faith is believing and speaking. Let's read it like that. And my believing and my speaking convinces, not God, it convinces me. Why is that helpful? Because I'm opposing my own soul right now. I'm having a fit of carnality. I'm storming back to my car with my bathing suit half blown off looking for a replacement. And my faith in him convinces me that he is more than able to keep all that I've placed in his hands safe and secure until the fullness of his appearing. What a great word for phase two for us as a church. Right now, I'll be remiss without giving you an opportunity if you'd say, Pastor Craig, I'm tired of opposing my own soul. I want to know that Jesus has redeemed my soul, that I'm born again. Would you pray with me? If I were to die today, I'm not sure whether I'm going to heaven. Well, let me ask you another question. If you were to stand before God today and he said, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Oh, you can think of all kinds of answers about what you've done and what you haven't done and what you're sorry for. But what you need to understand is that heaven is a free gift purchased for you by Jesus Christ. Paul said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died for you, 
paid the penalty for your sin, won a victory over the grave, that you would be saved. Pastor, you mean it's that simple? Yeah. I'd love to pray with you right now. If you're not sure and you want to be sure that Jesus Christ is Lord in your life, that heaven belongs to you, let's settle that right now. I don't know where you are. Maybe you're at home. Maybe you're listening on your smartphone in your car. Maybe you're watching at work. You're someplace. Maybe you're with somebody. Maybe you're with a friend. Maybe you're with family right now. Maybe you're all by yourself. But right now, God is right there in the room with you, and he's speaking to your heart in this moment. And you're hearing his voice within the sound of my voice right now, and I want to pray with you. If you say, Pastor Craig, that's me. I'm not sure. I want to be sure. Would you pray with me? Wherever you are right now, would you just put your hand over your heart and pray this prayer? Repeat it after me out loud and make it your prayer between you and God. And as you do, God is going to do something wonderful in your life. Everyone say, Father, in Jesus' name, I believe Jesus died for me. He paid the penalty for my sin. He won a victory over the grave. He presented his blood as a sacrifice for me. I received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. From this moment forward, I am born again. I am going to heaven. Thank you, Father for loving me so much to give me the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior and it's in Jesus name I pray and everybody said amen and amen we're so excited about your decision as you've been watching church at home this weekend I want to encourage you if you need help you can call the church office the number's been on the screen throughout the service also on the my FLC app on your smartphone if you haven't downloaded it, be sure and download it. It's free of charge. But on the app, go there and click the button that says Next Steps. That will put you in contact with us, and we'll be able to send you materials that will help you grow in your faith while you're watching Church at Home this weekend. Amen? Did you enjoy the word? Great word. We're not going to quit. We're going to recognize when we're opposing our own souls. Am I right or am I not? And... Uh, <clears throat> I promise never to use another prop for one of my stories from this moment forward. Love you guys. I hope you had fun this morning. Now, listen, you might have noticed that our our church at home service has been a different order today. And because of church at church already beginning last weekend and continuing this weekend, we sort of changed our order uh, online as well. So we're going to remind you and thank you for the offerings that you continue to give during this time. Uh, Over 90% of our giving throughout the pandemic has come in online. Many of you have mailed in your checks or even dropped it by here to the office during this time. We thank you for using all the tools. You'll find all the ways that you can give on the screen today. Proverbs 3.9 has been our thought and our word for this season for our giving. It says very simply that we are to honor the Lord. And this is another translation I've not used before. Proverbs 3.9, honor the Lord with the very best of your income. You want the rest of it? Watch. The result will be having too much, I love that translation in the Hebrew, or more than enough. When you have more than enough, enough, right? Then you're able to be a blessing beyond yourself. The tithe, the tenth, is giving back to God what belongs to him. It's about you supplying the income needed for your storehouse. You're investing in yourself. Everything beyond that is beyond yourself. So honoring the Lord or marking out a place for God is so key, especially when you find yourself under pressure, right? It's amazing how that reminder that God is part of your life by yielding that part of your life, the very best of your life, the very best of your income, the first fruits of your life, it reminds you that Jesus is Lord. It helps you when you find yourself opposing your own soul. And you're struggling through crisis. So thank you so much for being a blessing throughout the pandemic. And so right now, with your offering in mind, let me pray a blessing over your finances before we give you an opportunity to give. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you today for Family Life Church and the mighty men and women of God, Father, that have marked out a place for you, that have honored you week after week with the first fruits of their life. Even through the pandemic, while at home, they've continued to be together in Christ as a church. Father, bless them supernaturally. Father, we thank you for a release of blessings. For those that need jobs, we release jobs now in Jesus' name. Those that need increase and bills paid off, we release the monies for those bills to be paid off. Father, we sow this seed on the good soil of Family Life Church. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that I'm in front of today on screen. Joyful, cheerful, hilarious givers. And we bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, 
amen and amen. So no matter what your method of giving may be, thank you so much for continuing to give to your church on this very special church at home weekend. Now, let me just take a couple of minutes before we wind up our church at home service to remind you of some of the changes that are happening here at the church. They're happening every week. Uh, Last weekend, we added church at church at 7, 9, and 11. The church services were available to the public. We've been making it uh, uh, appropriate for social distancing. We had plenty of room last Sunday. We had great crowds show up. So nice to see people here. We probably had 30 to 40 percent of our normal attendance as people began to make those decisions. Again, there is no wrong decision. Many of you have great reasoning for staying home right now. Enjoy church at home. We're continuing to increase what we're doing here at the church as the science and our community leaders allow us to do that. And, uh, and so, in fact, this last week, Roots met for the first time on Wednesday night. They had a great crowd and a great time. They're continuing to meet every Wednesday night. We're not having adult services on Wednesday night, but Roots is meeting at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And I've already been told by our youth pastor uh, that uh, the kids love the sanctuary so much that they're not going to give it back on Wednesday nights. So we'll just have to see about that, right? But we're excited about all of them that were here the other night. They had a great time. Also, I want to remind you a big announcement today for those of you that have young children. Uh, seventh grade down to nursery. Of course, we've been having uh, our church at church. It's been all family here in the sanctuary beginning next weekend, a week from this weekend on June 14. We're going to offer children's ministry. Yes, you heard me say it. We're offering children's ministry at, now listen, at the 11 a.m. service only. 7 a.m. prayer service, 9 o'clock service, all family. And then at 11, if you have young children, 7th grade and down, all the way down the nursery. Our nurseries will be open, preschool open, iKids open, uh, uh, transit will be open. (coughs) We encourage you to be sure and and feel free to bring your children at the 11 o'clock service. Now, here's how you do it. If you go on the church app, we have a new, a new button to clip on, on, click on the app that says Kids Ministry RSVP. We need you to RSVP. You just click one simple button. It comes up, has the instructions there, and then you'll let us know. You'll begin to click the ages of your children that are going to come with you as well as your name and email and some basic information. Really, really simple. It takes seconds to do it. How do I know? When they create these buttons on the app, they always send it to me first. Say, Pastor, what do you think? And I click through, like it. So it's really, really simple. That will let us know how many children we're going to have at every age level in every classroom so that we can keep them appropriately social distanced and not exceed our capacities in our rooms as well as spread out to other rooms as is necessary. So it's a bit of a complicated process, but we've got it down. We've been working on it for a while. It will be safe for your children and, uh, and all the instructions are there on the app. Be sure and take a look. If, you're not, if you don't have the app, if you'll call the church office, that number will be on the screen again for you right now. Call the church office this week, and you can RSVP the number of children that you're bringing to the 11 o'clock service, and, uh, as well as they'll answer any questions that you might have when you call the church office. So two ways you can RSVP. Call the church office or go on the My FLC app. And you can RSVP for the 11 a.m. service on June the 14th for our very first Sunday to offer children's ministry. So we're very excited about that Sunday. So lots of things changing. We're continuing to offer this weekend, of course, the church at home. And then next weekend, church at church with children's ministry at 11 a.m. And then also the 9 a.m. and the 7 a.m. service. So lots of great things are happening. We love you guys. We trust that you are at your best right now in Jesus Christ. Be blessed and be a blessing and draw people to God in your lives.